Hey, how's it going? This is Engineer Mojo, and today we're going to focus on how to design a concrete beam and determine the required tension reinforcement. Now, this is going to dig into the application uh, and, and more so a practical design of a concrete beam and less on theory and to show you a quick way to design a concrete beam and determine the required tension reinforcement. This tutorial is just on the tension reinforcement. I'll provide another tutorial to show you how to design the shear reinforcement. Alright, so to start off we have a few givens. Uh, we're going to have a given factor design moment. Uh, we're going to have our specified yield stress for our steel, compressive strength for the concrete, the depth of the rebar from the compression face which we've already chosen and the width of the concrete beam and as you see here I have chosen a 30 inch deep beam 20 inches wide rebar is set at 27 inches from the top of the beam which is the compression face in the bottom of the beam is the tension face I've chosen a design factor moment of 350 kips per foot. Uh, you're still 60,000 psi. Uh, compressor strength of concrete, 3,000 psi. And we're ready to go. And that's just a little note as you see on the bottom. I do provide a PDF of this full walkthrough in the video description so you can download it and work along or just keep it for your own notes as, as well. The first thing you want to do is calculate, um, it's, it's kind of a variation of a moment factor calculation. Um, so your MU, which is your design factored moment, divided by the design strength of the concrete, the width of the beam, and the depth of the rebar. And you see that gives you, it's a modified moment factor calculation and I'll put a definition of the moment factor calculation. This is just a one way to go about starting to design the tension reinforcement for a concrete beam. There are different avenues you can take. This is a nice easy quick way to go about it. And then from that value you're going to go to the table that I've given you down below in the description to determine your tension reinforcement index. And This is just a value that you can use to it directly relates to the reinforcement ratio that is required based on the moment that your beam is trying to resist. So this table, I've calculated it for you. It's Excel sheet. It's down in the video description. You can download it and use it and you can go in there and see exactly what I did to calculate uh, the table. This table is also available in the Structural Engineering Reference Manual by PPI, but you can, like I did, make your own. You can just take mine next thing you want to do is take your tension reinforcement index and determine the reinforcement ratio and you do that by taking the reinforcement index multiplying it by the strength of the concrete and dividing by the yield strength of the steel and as you see we get 0 0.0057 reinforcement ratio Next thing you want to do is you want to make sure that the ratio that you calculated from the reinforcement index within the requirements from ACI. So ACI provides a reinforcement minimum and a reinforcement ratio maximum uh, that you need to uh, fall within. Now I put down in the actual PDF where in ACI you can find these values. So if you download that and you can see exactly the section where I'm getting these min and max ratio values. So to determine the min, you have to do the max of 3 times the square root of the strength of the concrete divided by the strength of the steel or 200 divided by the strength of the steel, whatever is the maximum value, that's what you use. Next step is to determine the maximum ratio, reinforcement ratio. And again, it's just an empirical formula from ACI. And again, I put it down in the uh, guidelines, PDF guidelines that I put in the video description. I get a reinforcement ratio max of 0 0.0155. And then determine the reinforcement ratio required. 
I take what I've gotten from the previous slide which was the reinforcement ratio from the reinforcement index and that was 0 0.0057 I compare that to the minimum if it's higher then I use that and then I compare that to the max reinforcement ratio and I choose the minimum from those and so when that's all said and done the reinforcement ratio is 0 0.0057 that's required now I'm going through some of these terms pretty fast I try to define every term that I'm using down below if you have any questions uh, please ask down below as well uh, this is a tutorial for more of a practicing engineer or someone who's familiar with with uh, concrete and, and ACI but don't let that deter you if you have questions please ask down below and I'll be sure to answer or hopefully somebody in the community can answer All right, next thing you want to do is determine that the reinforcement ratio is going to produce a tension controlled section and what that means is that you won't have a brittle failure of your concrete beam so again this is an ACI equation that you can use and the required reinforcement ratio to provide a ductile concrete beam section is 0 0.0136 now you want to compare that in the next step to the required reinforcement ratio that you got from before and as long as that is less than the reinforcement ratio from ACI that requires a ductile section then you're okay so remember uh, basically it's saying that if you have too much reinforcement uh, you're gonna have a brittle failure from your concrete beam so you want the beam to be able to deflect a little bit before failure to give people notice that the beam is going to fail. If you have so much reinforcement in there that the beam doesn't deflect, then whoever's in the building or the structure doesn't have adequate notice that the beam is going to fail. So this is very important to provide a ductile section. Next thing you want to do is now that you have nailed down the exact reinforcement ratio that you need for the steel section, then that uh, directly equates to the area of steel required which is the next step area steel required is just the reinforcement ratio times the width of the beam times the depth of the rebar from the reinforcement face a lot of people confuse this with the height of the beam this is not the correct uh, value to use it's the depth of the rebar so always remember that little note so after doing all the calculations I got an area of steel required of 3.078 inches squared and I did a trial and error and I get four number eight bars as a possible solution uh, for the bottom reinforcement of this beam and that gives me a, a area of steel 3.14 inches squared which is above 3.078 inches required so the last step I usually do when I'm going through and I want to do a quick check of a concrete beam is to use this equation uh, the design factor moment divided by 4d now this gives you a quick and dirty approximation of the area still that you need and I always use this at the end or before of my calculations to make sure that I didn't make any weird uh, calculated errors if the value I get from this MU divided by 4d is close to what I got from the entire you know calculation process then I know that I'm I'm close enough I'm spot on uh, with my calculations so as you see here uh, the area is still estimated using the design factor moment mu divided by 4d and I get a area estimated of 3.24 inches squared and this is very close to the answer I got before which was 3.078 inches squared now it's okay that it's not you know exact or it's more or less this is just this equation provides an estimate of what you should get so if your answer you got was close to this then you know that you're on the right track there and take note that this is not a equation that the units work out um, this is a another empirical type e equation 
Uh, your moment is going to be kip per foot, and that was 350. Uh, your D is going to be, of course, the depth of the rebar from the compression face, and that's going to be 27 inches. And as you see, you have kip foot, and you have inches in the bottom, so it won't cancel out as you would think, but that is the way this uh, equation is set up. It, so you don't have to worry about the units working out. So with that, I've gone through, and this is a very quick way to design a concrete beam uh, for the tension reinforcement. There are multiple ways you could have done this. I personally like using the tension reinforcement index value and the spreadsheet that I have down below to quickly calculate the reinforcement ratio I need. You could use a different equation, which is a lot longer. Um, and I usually feel like I make mistakes when I use that equation. I'll put that down below as well in the PDF as an alternative way to determine the reinforcement ratio. Well, this way I feel is a lot safer when I'm punching numbers in the calculator. So, of course, if you have any questions, please comment down below. Please like, please subscribe. Um, if you have any alternative ways to design a concrete beam, please post it up and share with the community. And as always, thanks for listening and be on the lookout for more of these tutorial videos. Have a good one.